Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to another plant haul. If it is echoey in here, you might be able to work out where I'm stood. I'm stood in front of my living wall today. It's actually way too sunny to record anything upstairs because the sun is just blasting through the window and I was just cooking. So today I'm going to record here. This is my living wall behind me if you don't already know. Um, it's a little bit it's going through some stuff, it's acclimating at the minute, so if it doesn't look absolutely place perfect, that's why. Anyway, this plant haul is a little bit different because it's actually not a rare plant haul. And I know that sounds a little bit silly, but I don't know on my channel when I've last done a plant haul that isn't rare. I know, it's, it's just weird for me not to do that because generally I deal in rare plants. However, when I moved to this new shop and I did my studio up, if you see me looking up there, I'm pointing at my studio. I had a few ideas on the plants that I wanted to put in there and it is famously sparse at the moment. So I did a little bit of thinking and I think I mentioned in the documentary that there are some wish list plants that I wanted to pop in there. Um, they weren't rare plants. There are actually some plants that I used to own like way back when, when I started my channel and I decided that I really, really wanted to have them again. They're just plants that I've just known and loved and I've missed them in their absence. And I mean, this was like a year ago. I think my mother has a couple of my plants actually that I gave away from back then that I've since replaced. So what I'm getting at is today is a plant haul. There is not many plants, there's about four plants. Two of them are plants that I used to own and I miss them and I really, really wanted to replace them. I've missed them that much. So I've got two plants that I used to own like way back in the day. And then I have, I'm looking around me because they're on the floor. I have two new ones. And as it happens, I have a banana sat next to me that needs a water. So I'll probably just pick that up and show you that at the end because I've got a really, really pretty Musa that's here. So let's start with, let's alternate. Since I have four and I have two that I used to own and then two that are kind of new, I'll just alternate. So I'll start with one I used to own and I don't know if people are gonna remember this or not. It, this is really interesting actually. I don't know if people are gonna know that I used to own these or not, but I'll pick it up because it's beautiful and it's soft. It's very soft. I owned this plant at some point way back when, when I used to do videos in my bedroom in the old flat and it's not a fern. It's not a fern. I'm not actually sure what it is, but it's not a fern. I can't remember. It's called a fern, but it's not a fern. And I had it on my desk in quite a lot of my videos, I think. I'd have to go and check, but I'm pretty sure this lived in my bedroom on my vanity unit. And when I was in the Netherlands, which was sometime in July when I was filming the documentary, when I was getting plans for the wall, I nearly picked one of these up, but they only had like a super huge one in. But I didn't pick one up because I didn't want one that big. And I mean, this was a big plant. So I wanted to get something smaller. I've still, even now I've picked up a bigger one than what I was going to. But this, my first plant that I'm bringing back from basically extinction on my channel is what I believe to be an asparagus fern. And these are just brilliant. I can't remember how humidity tolerant they actually are. Full disclosure, I've still got the um, the little tag in this pot. It just says asparagus. Does it say anything else? No, it says nothing. So I didn't pick this up in the Netherlands, by the way. I picked this up in the UK at the weekend. Uh, anyone that saw my Instagram stories will know that I went to get a few plants, but I'm gonna show you this up close. The new, uh, new leaves, new fronds kind of come in a little bit more sparse and then they end up being a little bit more filled in like that. It's a super soft plant, if you don't know. Very, very soft to the touch, it's beautiful. And it kind of looks like, if I just hold it here, it looks kind of like a mini tree. And I remember picking the first asparagus fern I had out. I remember picking it out in London in a plant shop way back when, when I got it. And I picked, I spent about 20 minutes looking for the perfect asparagus fern and I found one. I think I bought a pot from the same place. But yeah, this one's a little bit, you know, maybe it needs a groom, I don't know. I'm probably just gonna let it do its thing, but it's such a pretty plant. And believe it or not, it's a plant that I really sorely missed. It's not something I expected to miss, but I do. I think it's really, really beautiful. Again, just super soft. If you've never felt one before and you see one in the plant shop, please give it a little touch, gently. Um, just really, really pretty plants. I paid, I'll tell you how much I paid. I paid $13.99 for this. So this is probably definitely classed as a common house plant, I would assume, at least for us in the UK. It's the cheapest plant I have today, I believe, because one of them was very pricey, but I think that's just due to its size. It's weird, you know, going into a plant shop and buying really any plant because 
it's it's kind of weird seeing the retail price when you know what the wholesale price is. So that was kind of really interesting to see what each different retailer's like markup on the products was. That's not going to interest anybody else but me. I appreciate that. But anyway, asparagus fern, love it. I don't have a pot yet. I'm still looking for some self-watering solutions for this. It's living down here with me at the moment because I know for a fact if I take it up there into the studio without any self-watering, it's just gonna dry out like no tomorrow. So all of the plants today will be living down here until I can get a good solution for them. But asparagus fern, a classic, love it. Please have it back. So I will switch over now and I will show you one of the newer plants I bought. And I wasn't highly aware of this plant prior. I'm not saying it's rare. I, I would argue maybe it's uncommon, at least in the UK, it's very uncommon. I would say it's a really, really, really pretty plant. It is a type of xanthosoma, actually. And I don't think I've really owned a xanthosoma before. I think I've owned one or two, maybe, but I didn't really hold on to them. But this one is just super pretty. It's really striking. I don't know if it's going to come off on camera, how striking it is, but it's really, really pretty. I'll just grab it. So this plant right here is known as Xanthosoma lindellii, I believe that is how you pronounce it. The name is up on the screen, of course. And it is really, really cool plant. Now, juvenile, it looks a bit crap. I'm not going to lie. I'll show you some juvenile leaves here. Um, the leaves start out super juvenile and you can't see any pattern, but the pattern gradually comes through in time and you get this super cool. Are you going to focus? Yes. Super, super cool veining. I think if you're into really contrasty anthurium and stuff like that, I actually think that this is a really good, cheap kind of alternative for that. If you want the vibe of longer paddly leaves with contrasted veining, I actually think this plant's quite good for that. But yeah, I've saw this plant a while ago. I'll just hold it like that because it looks real good. I saw this plant a while ago. I think on Instagram, someone just had it amongst a bunch of plants. Then I think I saw it on a couple of websites way back when, maybe three months ago. Didn't pick one up, but I saw it in person and then I had to pick it up because I just thought it was awesome. There's a couple in the pot, so I'll probably separate them out and grow them out. Uh, it's in Coyer as well. I'll probably keep it in that for the foreseeable future. It's just a really, really nice plant. Another cool thing about this plant, regardless of this, literally, that's throwing really nice on camera. I'm assuming it's going to look as good when I edit it. But the cool thing also about this plant are the stems on the plant. They're really, really weird. I'll see if I can show you well. So hopefully that will focus right there. The stems have dark stripes up them, but they're also kind of hairy as well. It's really bizarre. See if I can get any closer on this. There. Really cool stripes at the stem, which are not present in the leaf, really, at all. They're kind of fluffy. It's kind of coarse, but it's fluffy. Really, really nice plant. It's pushing out a new leaf as well. Really, really lovely. Um, the tag on this, for some cool reason, says it's a philodendron. It isn't. It's definitely a xanthosoma. It's just a really striking plant. And as I said before, I do think it's a really nice alternative if you're looking for a plant that is contrasted, but it's quite affordable. I did pay $32.99 for this one here. I think that's probably quite steep, even given what it is and you can't find it very often. Personally, I think that's a little bit steep. But then again, I haven't seen many of them around. So it is what it is, I suppose. One of those things. But look at it. Look at that. It's really, really pretty plant. So that is Xanthosoma lindellii. Yeah, that takes us. You know what? I'm going to do the big one last, even though I've just said I'm going to alternate just because it is really huge. And a lot of people probably going to guess what it is. I did ask you guys to guess on Instagram what I had actually bought for this haul. And a lot of you guessed correctly on one of them. So you only really gave me one guess, but you, uh, most of you were correct, if that's anything. So let's do the other plant that I have and then we'll go to the big one. So the other plant that I purchased, I kind of went back and forth on a little bit, I think. I believe I ran across it when I was doing, I think the second philodendron rare plant index. And I didn't think much of it until I saw what the new leaves looked like. And I think I just saw more photographs of it. I followed the hashtag on Instagram and then I kind of got into them. I'm sure I'm not alone in that. I'm sure a lot of people that get plants, they kind of go through that when they want a plant. You kind of just spam yourself with photographs of it and see if you really like it. This grew on me over time and now I love it. But I bought it on Saturday gone. I'm filming this on Thursday, the 12th of November. But I bought it on Saturday and since it's been in here, the caterpillar on the plant seems to have gone to mush for no real reason. It hasn't exactly gone through a stressful journey. It's just come here. But I will show you what it is. And I don't think anyone's going to guess this one. 
I'll be honest, but it is a philodendron and I'm very pleased to have it. So I'm going to pick it up. So unfortunately the caterpillar is not good, but this is something that I think is very awesome. It's not for everyone, I will say that. But this here, a lot of you know what it is. This here is philodendron totem. So it grows, I'm pretty sure it's a climber from what I've seen on Instagram. You really can't tell, but it is a climber. The caterpill on this is totally balked. Don't know if it's gonna let you see that. Is it gonna focus there? Totally balked, not very happy about that. I can see some webbage around the bottom, but I don't think it's spider mites. You know what? That might be spider mites. Is it? Is it? Mm, it could have spider mites, that. That's not ideal, is it? So that needs a spray. Thank God it's literally quarantined in here. It's nowhere near anything. I believe there may be spider mites around the base. It's hard to tell. Don't think there's any on the leaves. Nope. Oh, wait, no, a little bit of webbage on the leaves. There's webbage, but no spider mites. So unknown. I'll have to spray it and just take the risk anyway. But anyway, philodendron totem, not for everyone. I hope you can see it against the background. This is one of the reasons why I wasn't super excited about filming in front of the living wall. Although beautiful, if you're doing plant holes, you can't necessarily separate the plants from the background. This is a bit different. So the new leaves come in, I can't show you, but the caterpillar was a nice peachy baby pink. It's not anymore. So new leaves come in kind of pink and they kind of unfurl. It looks a little bit like a palm. It's got to be said, but I tell you something, these petioles are really like kind of juicy almost. It's really, really nice. And it's softer than a palm. Obviously it's very flexible. I probably shouldn't compare it to a palm because it's not a palm. It's nothing like a palm. But if you like palms and the way they look, I can't see why you wouldn't like this because this is like a low light alternative to a palm. Really, really nice little plants. I really hope it's not infested with anything because that would suck. As I say, this grew on me. I didn't, I wasn't crazy about it in the beginning and it just kind of grew on me over time. But now I have my own. And again, I need a self-watering pot. I don't have one yet. Now, I am looking into the solutions you guys gave me on Instagram. I, just, I really haven't had time with shipping everything out. But it's a really, really nice little plant and I'm looking forward to seeing it grow. I just think now we're gonna have to wait even longer because of this dead ass rotted caterpill in the middle, which is such a shame. I believe I paid around about 35 pounds for this plant. I would call it uncommon if I was probably gonna put it in a rare plant index, either uncommon or rare. I'm not sure on that. I don't even know what I did categorize it. If you know, please let me know down below, but it's beautiful and I can't wait for it to grow a bit more. You see that the petioles are kind of pink if I hold it back, probably not. We'll put him down. And we will get on to the large lady that I bought. And we have to start standing further back because she's big. So my last plant I have to show you before I just show you the banana because it's sat here is a plant that I was obsessed with when I owned it. I was obsessed with it. I was proud of it because I think I just grew it really well in the conditions I had. It loved life. It really loved life. And when I had to move, it was one of my larger plants and I had to give it away. So my mother actually is looking after my original plant right now, but I really, really wanted another one. I haven't really thought about much since I got rid of that. I'm happy that my mom has mine because it's a beautiful plant, but I was in a position to get another one and it was larger than the one I had. So I kind of feel like all is right with the world because I feel like if I had kept it all this time, it would have grown to this size anyway. So I'm really pleased to be able to tell you that I bought another Stromanthi Trio Star. And this is the plant that quite honestly, most of you guessed, if I'm totally honest. Um, I don't think there's many people who didn't guess that when I said I bought a plant that I used to have. So I'm guessing that I raved about it a lot in my videos, but I'm gonna pick it up now because it's huge, right? It's huge. I do have a self-watering pot for this. It's just arrived today. It's in my front office. I need to pot it up. Let me try and pick her up and I'll try and remember how much she was. Oh, the price is on there. Oh, it's less than I thought actually by a little bit. So if I just, <laughs> I love it when this happens on the channel. Let's see if it's easier this side. So if I just stand back, because this plant is honestly huge. Um, that's kind of her there. She's massive. Um, she's in a huge pot. I don't know the size of the pot but it's huge. So this plant is a great plant. I'll try and bring it a bit closer so you can see it a little bit better. I'm probably not going to be in the frame though. This plant is an awesome, awesome plant because it just, it has that variegated vibe and it's just part of the plant. It, it won't revert. It can't do any of that. It just chills. And if I show you the back of it, if you've never seen these plants before, that's the back of the plant. Can you see how absolutely breathtakingly amazing that is? That's gorgeous. Obviously, 
kind of goes without saying that there's maybe, I don't even know how many plants in this pot. There's a lot. And obviously a lot of them have developed like a second tier there that I probably will chop. Um, pff, I could plant in my face because I like my, like my stromanthi, I tend to like them smaller and bushier, but you can obviously let them grow taller. Absolutely fine. I just prefer to keep them as a bit of a bush. But that is her. I'm so happy about it. There was a uh, Stromanthi Sangini Magic Star as well in the same place, but I didn't pick it up because this one was actually quite pricey. It was $57.99. I, I would say it was pricey, but then again, as I mentioned before, I'm thinking of wholesale price. I'm not actually used to retail prices anymore on things. So it was kind of eye-opening for that because I think the original Trio Star that I bought way back in the day for my channel, I think I paid 15 great British pounds for that. And obviously it wasn't as big as this one, but it was quite big. So that's quite an increase really on what's that like two years ago so yeah i'm probably gonna groom the top two off um but she really pretty she needs a bit of a clean hopefully she doesn't have anything it's from a different nursery to the last one so she should be fine but look how amazing this plant is i'll stand back with her again just so you can see her in all her glory she is absolutely amazing and i'm really really pleased to have her back um nothing fills me with more joy than having her back so I'll pop her down. Hopefully she didn't go into my microphone, otherwise it would have been a bit noisy. Right, that kind of concludes the haul, but I think I will show you, I'm just looking around to see if there's anything else interesting that I can show you, because I like to do that if I've got something in that's cool. I can just kind of pull it out on camera. I don't think so. I'll talk about the wall a little bit before I go, but I'll just show you this Moosa Florida that I have, because it's gone through a journey. I bought this in possibly May or June, it was a long time ago and it has taken a hell of a long time to grow anything. Um, so here it is. It doesn't look the best, but it's getting there. It's definitely getting there. So this is basically, if you don't know, it's a variegated banana and they're highly sought after. I think they're different to the other variegated moussa that you can get. I, should, I wish Ben was here because I would ask him because he knows this and I don't right now. But it's a variegated banana, but it, look at it, honestly. Look at that, that is just amazing. So that's the newest leaf. This is an old one that hasn't done brilliantly. It's probably not gonna focus on the leaves. I'm sorry guys, it's wanting to focus on me. So this leaf here hasn't done amazingly, uh, but it is old and it was the one that's kind of come out through, you know, acclimation from shipping. It's in Lekka at the minute, but I need to get it out of Lekka because these plants shouldn't be in Lekka. Do you know what I mean? Not everything is great in Lekka and this is probably a good example. So it does need repotted. Um, I'm working on that. I need, apparently I need quite a big pot because the roots fill up the pot very quickly. So for now, she is in this kind of situation, but she looks amazing. And I want to show you just how amazing she looks. If it just cover my face. Look at that. Honestly, that's just amazing. So when she is potted up, she will go in my studio in a nice spot, hopefully. And she will just absolutely dominate the room because we're going to grow a really, really big and nice. So I'm quite excited about that. And before I go, I'll try and stand out of the way. Living wall is going okay. There's a bit of a crystal that's clearly going to lose a leaf. That's fine. It'll grow a new one. Uh, the tie is doing beautifully. Can you see this on camera? Yeah, the tie is kind of the limit of where you can see. Um, I have an alocasia down here. Can you see that? Yes, you can. It's alocasia golden bone. We did have, if you remember, if you watched the documentary and you watched me plant the living wall, we did have a big regal here. We do still have it, it's just dropped the leaf so the nav's a big gap. But obviously over time it will grow a new leaf when it's acclimated. I cannot show you the roots and everything, but there's just aerial roots sprawled all over this wall. I do have a Vitari folium here actually, and you're not going to be able to see this, you might. There's a new leaf coming in. There's some Gloriosum, more crystals here. There's tons, there's some seeds and an anthurium there. There is a forgetii in the back. Uh, some tetrasperma just chilling. It, it really needs pinned to the wall luck. It's just kind of chilling at the bottom. That's a forgetii that's dangerously close to being knocked. Um, I have a random, I believe it's a crystalline. I'm just in a pot. It shouldn't be sat there in a pot, but it is. And that's kind of it really. There's some, not Montanum. What is it? Uh, I had it on a video last week. I think it's Rosio. Rosio Catafilm, I think. I did mention last week's video, I had a few of them on the wall and that's like one of like five. But yeah, it's going okay. There's some lichens back here as well. So yeah, there's some gaps, but that's honestly just because 
a lot of the big anthurium we've put on have dropped their leaves in acclimation and a lot of them seem to have sacrificed their leaves to give really big juicy aerial roots which is fine um, it's just as I say it's a process so I will keep you up to date on that and we'll see how it goes but anyway thank you very much for watching my I don't know what to call this plant haul common plant haul I don't know it's, it's weird for me doing these kind of videos but I thoroughly enjoyed myself shopping last weekend it was really nice um, it was kind of weird to go into a plant shop and buy something and I know that sounds ridiculous I get that but I don't really need to do that anymore and it was really cool to do it so maybe I'll look out for some more plants for up in the studio that are you know some of the ones I used to own maybe I'm not done yet I don't know um, but until then I will see you next week where I believe I'm about to record it after this if I can find a table I'm going to be repotting some of the Hoya that I last hauled not all of them because I don't have enough pots but that should be the video you probably get next week unless something else comes up so thank you very much for watching this haul and I will see you next week I guess Bye, guys.